All right, Kyle Mohan Racing, KMR Shop. We're on the back bench, and by popular request, or just because we had one of our followers ask a lot of questions about this specific topic, here we have it. How to identify a 1989 to 91 Mazda RX-7 rotor and a whole bunch of the rotor specs and information. So we're going to start off and go down a little bit of that specification and information. So this particular RX-7 rotor, the 89 to 91 in the U.S., uh, although I think in some countries they were available into the 92 year, is available in a high compression and turbo low compression application. From the factory, they came in at approximately 9.5 pounds. So as the generations of rotors have gotten newer, they have gotten lighter. So comparing this to some of the earlier rotors that were 10 pounds, we have some weight savings right off the top. And uh, to give that in grams, approximately 4,328 grams. Always remember, we're using specifications from the original generation of rotors. And as I've talked about, if you buy a brand new Mazda rotor, I would expect it to be 50 to 100 grams lighter than this rotor, so you've always got to buy new rotors in pairs or keep your old rotors in pairs. Moving down that, that list, the 89 to 91 rotor uh, has a compression ratio of 9.7 to 1 on the naturally aspirated application. If you're dealing with one of the Turbo uh, Series 5, 89 to 91 or 92 rotors, those would come in at approximately 9 to 1. So you've got some compression options happening in this generation of rotors. Uh, whether it be naturally aspirated or turbo, they come in at a surprisingly close to similar weights. So you can't really use the weight of the rotor as an identification cue. My favorite way to identify these rotors is by the shape of the pocket. If you look at this pocket, it's a machined pocket, 89s, similar to FDs and uh, 20Bs and RX-8s will always have the machine marks in the pocket. Comparatively speaking to earlier rotors, your 86 to 88, or even earlier, you'd have a cast pocket. So if it's cast, you're earlier than 89. Now, pocket identification in machined pockets, you can see that this pocket has what I consider a rounded pocket. And if you bring over an FD rotor, you'll notice that it actually has what I consider a squarer pocket. Aside from the fact that a FD would be low compression, it would have a deeper pocket compared to an 89NA. Um, but if you happen to have an 89 turbo, your pocket depths would be very similar. The machine marks would be very similar. And what I always have noticed is I consider the FDs to be a square pocket. And they've always got this little bit of taper off that helps create that square shape. And your 89s always have this slightly rounded edge. Um, a 20B rotor falls into the same generation of the FC3S 89 to 91. Um, they are interchangeable as long as you match the weights. So 20Bs also have this similar shape. As far as identifying turbo versus NA, the pocket's depth is a good cue, but if you don't have a, a turbo rotor to look at, then I always recommend flipping it to the oil gallery side, non-gear side, and your turbo rotors always have a T stamp or casting T. Uh, sometimes that is hard to find, but it's always. Just continuing on with the, the clarity of identification, comparatively speaking to the RX-8 rotor or latest model rotor, you could see that the pocket is still a machined pocket in an RX-8, but it is exceptionally shallow by comparison because the RX-8 rotor would be a 10 to 1 compression rotor. And if you ever have seen an RX-8 rotor, you're also going to notice that on the exhaust side they are notched right here so it's got a little wing cut angle cut so very easy to identify or or exclude the rx8 rotors from something that would be an 89 to 91. um you know kind of cool stuff 
This would be actually a late model rotor because you can see it's got the factory step down from the land area to the tip area. Um, these are all factory uh, balancing marks and uh, my personal feeling on this is Mazda does not balance rotors side to side. They're simply balancing the front rotor to the rear counterweight and the front counterweight to the rear rotor. Had to think about that. So, uh, you know, when you're talking about uh, lightning rotors, you can see we remove a lot of that factory balancing, but we're just going to go ahead and balance on the counterweights. So, you know, maybe I'll have to do a tech talk about balancing. Back to the rotor identification. Always remember your late model rotors are always going to be two millimeter, whether it's an 86, 89, FD, or an RX-8. They're two millimeter grooves. The RX-8 grooves are a little more shallow. We'll have to do an RX-8 talk. Um, but, uh, you know, I never recommend opening up a two millimeter groove to a three millimeter. Factory two millimeter grooves are fantastic. Great apex seal sealing, and they work great. Um, I think that covered uh, most of our 89 to 91, or depending on what country you're in, 92 rotors. Feel free to comment below if there's something I missed, um, if there's something you agree with, you don't agree with. We're always happy to discuss it. And I just really enjoy uh, you know, sharing a lot of the information we've learned um, at KMR and at Mazda Tricks through our racing and through our engine builds over the years. Make sure to check out the KMR social media pages, um, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. Check out our website, kylemohanracing.com. We're actually putting out a lot of new products, uh, water o-ring kits, porting templates, and just make sure to stay in touch and follow KMR. We love rotaries. I hope you do too.